Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Powerful Man Show. I am your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host and founder, Tim, The Powerful mm-hmm. Man Matthews. Tim, what's going on, brother? Doing very well. Very well, indeed. Good, good. You have a big weekend coming up, I know. Uh, but let's yeah. jump right into it, Tim, uh, and talk about it. So we were talking off, uh, offline a little bit uh, about this, about how oftentimes for guys, they've basically given up their role at, at home. And they've kind of gone out with this mentality of, hey, I'll take care of work, you take care of the house. And as a byproduct of that, what's happened for a lot of men going through this situation, I certainly see it a lot and I know you do, is guys, they give up the power at the home. And when they come home, they become subjected to really being the beta in the family as soon as they walk through the door, right? It's now the woman's domicile. It's her Mm -hmm. kingdom, so to speak, her house, her, her realm. And the guy just becomes a subject under her, which obviously if you look at polarity, that ruins all aspects of intimacy because now the woman is the alpha, the man becomes the beta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's been the theme of the last several calls I've had with the men that have joined the program. You know, they, and you know, we've spoken about this before. I get it right. I, sometimes fall into that trap very easily you know it's that whole thing of hey i'm working uh, i'm going to put the hours in here amelia doesn't work you know, she does a thing goes to the gym walks the dogs has personal training goes climbing and um takes care of the house so to speak <laughs> but what happens for us whenever i then fall into because it's very easy to fall into it fall into that pattern is it's almost a sense of entitlement that can that can then come over me as a guy not necessarily because i'm i'm making the money but because uh it's a sense of entitlement you go downstairs and there's mess you know there might be plates in the kitchen or uh the rubbish might you know bin might need emptying or whatever and you can easily think god you know what i'm up there working you know and i come down and i just want to have a clean kitchen what what's all the mess about you can't you know obviously i don't say that out loud but that's <laughs> the thought process it used to be anyway the thought process it was very easy to fall into that mode because for the most part for the previous decades 50 years or so that's been what society has told us right and the way to provide as a man is to provide financially and when you do that you, you've done your job Yet that is part of what is a big part of what is fueling the disconnection in the relationship with the men that we work with. One guy said it today, Tim, it's not even that I want more sex. It's just the intimacy was what I want. I want her to hold my hand when we walk down the street, to look at me like she did when we got married, to show me that I am her one and only. I am her man. If we have sex, great. So, you know, I hear that a lot as well. So it's the guys as well as the women that are are craving this deep level of intimacy. But as a guy, if if you want to fall into the role of, hey, I'm doing enough because I'm making the money, then what happens is by default, you put your wife into a position whereby she's got to lead a big area of your relationship, a big area of your life. And when you completely abdicate, it's like in your business, right? There's delegation via abdication or um, you you can delegate effectively. When you abdicate leadership, you just give it away. It's kind of like what you do to your wife. She either has to rise and deal with all these pressures and make all these decisions herself. So when you come into the home, there's no, like you said, Doug, there's no polarity there. She's had to rise and become masculine as well. Then she doesn't realize she's doing it. So she doesn't really switch it off when you're around. And you come in through the door in your masculine because you've been at work and then communi- you know, there's no connection. Communication doesn't occur. Sparks fly and you wonder why, hang on a minute, I'm, I'm working, I'm bringing home the money. She's got everything she could ever want. Why she should be worshiping me when I walk through the door? Why is this not working? But this is part of the, the undercurrent and it's absolutely key that you're able to spot this and and shift and this doesn't mean going to the other extreme and starting to do every bit of housework 
but it does mean, you know, like for example, last night for me, uh, I went downstairs into the kitchen. Um, I was tired, but there was, you know, a load of mess. I wanted to cook my dinner. Amelia had cooked, hence why there was mess. And she was <laughs> sat on jam. the sofa. <laughs> she was sat on the sofa, relaxing. So I just put everything in the dishwasher, did the bin, just did it all whilst I was cleaning. It would have been easier for me not to do it. And quite frankly, I didn't want to do it. But I remembered about this. And those tiny little things without her having to ask me go such a long way in allowing her to continue to relax and surrender into her feminine. 100%. 100%. And something that's interesting is you look at, you know, I would say today's society, Tim, you know, I'm a little bit older than you, but I would say people 50, older than me. I am a lot older than you, 50 on the way down, you know, probably to 30s or so, maybe even younger is you look at this this paradox transformation, like going away from the, the nuclear family or going away from the traditional family. Wife stays at home, takes care of the kids. Husband goes to work. Now, you and I have that kind of relationship with our families because uh, we've been able to do it. But a lot of people don't, right? A lot of people are dual income, et cetera, et cetera, and, or choose to do it a different way. Now, what has been taught to a lot of people, and I'll use the area of finance, right? Because that's one that comes up a lot with marriages. Right, money becomes an issue, is the guy takes care of the business finances and the woman takes care of the home finances. And it's <laughs> very it's talked about a lot. And what I've seen time and time again with couples and relationships is this tends to have a different power dynamic now, right? The guy's got everything mm -hmm. at work. He starts hiding money out in work. And then you and I know people, a lot of them that get their bonuses and cash and get other things and they start squirreling money away because they don't feel they have control at home or they're being controlled at home with what they can do and what they can spend. Thus, they're reducing the power dynamic here, right? They're, they're flipping it on its end. They're becoming the beta to their wife's alpha. Now, I think what comes more important to this fact of not just doing it is why does the woman feel the need to become the alpha? Right. That so the becoming the alpha, right, or becoming the dominant or person in the relationship, that's a symptom. The deeper problem here is what is she lacking? And that usually for women, their number one thing when you look at the hierarchy of needs is going to be security. Does she feel secure in this Safety. relationship? Safety, security, yeah. Does she feel secure? Does she trust you as a man that you're gonna do what you say you're gonna do? That you're gonna protect her, that you're gonna be honest with her. Right? Are you open with her? Does she feel she knows all of you and getting all of you? Not just factually, right? We hear this all the time. Guys say they can't share their emotions. We get it, right? But what is it that you're doing or not doing that's giving up? You said abdicating, giving up your relationship, giving up your power. And why is it more importantly that your wife doesn't feel or your partner doesn't feel safe and secure? And so I think these are the real questions as men we get to ask ourselves is where did we miss that switch, right? Now, society's taught us in this power dynamic of women having equal rights, and I, I'm a believer in that, that therefore the woman should control 50% of the financial decisions, and st et cetera, et cetera, and therefore the man gets the other 50. I don't believe that. I have not seen that work really well in relationships that I know to be long-term successful, intimate relationships, Tim. Where I've seen it work really well is where the man is able to make the decision, come together with the woman or vice versa, depending on how you want that dynamic. Um, and both parties are informed. Both parties make decisions as another entity, right? So you have two people in the relationship and the third entity is the relationship itself. And that's where you get to shift things with intimacy really well. Uh, but don't get caught up in the symptoms. So I'm, gonna talk, I'm talking, not talking to you, Tim. I know you know this, but to the men listening. The symptoms are just a sign of a deeper issue underlying there. And that mm -hmm. deeper issue, when we talk about intimacy, is going to show up in the bedroom, right? But mm -hmm. it usually shows up in the bedroom last. It's going to show up other areas like arguments of dishes, trash, or the bins, you know, getting taken out or other things that start to stack. And when those things start to stack, men feel their control slipping away. And what we've been taught about society, right? We become second nature. My better half talking about the spouse. You know, you look at commercials on TV, Tim, it's always the dumb husband who doesn't know anything, right? My wife was reading, my wife started chuckling and she was reading an Amazon review for bottle warmers for babies. 
And one woman said, this bottle warmer, warmer is husband proof. And there was all these likes by the women and my wife chuckled about this thing. But the point being is you couldn't say that about her. I couldn't go on to Amazon, write a review and say, this one's woman proof. It's great. You would get, you would get crucified for saying something like that. So it's a society. It's not the guy's fault. It's society that's flipped the script a little bit, but it's up to the man to take back his power, right? Lead the woman, right? In all areas, the bedroom, finances, decisions, et cetera, and then step in and take control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You raise a great point. I mean, it's not, in my opinion, it's you know taking that power back. Let's say redefining that power, um, because I don't think you know. Just to be clear, we're not saying you take something from her. Uh, you get to redefine it, <clears throat> and part of that redefinition as as a man is to realize that the way to provide for your woman first and foremost is emotionally. You've got to be there. You've got to be present. We've had it with tons of guys at the Alpha Reset that said, T you know, Tim. My wife and my kids were telling me that I wasn't present, but I was there. I'm saying I'm present. I'm present. <laughs> and by day three, he realizes it was never present. Yep. So it was there. Logically, instead he was there, he wasn't there emotionally. He didn't know how to give himself to his wife or his kids and provide a space in which they could then relax and feel safe and flourish. It's, it's kind of like a pinball machine, right? If you think about the frame of a pinball machine, that's kind of like our role as a, as a man. The woman's the pinball. And the space that we've got to create in the relationship is we get to be the frame. The pinball can bounce around it. And if that frame isn't there and you, you hit the toggle, the pinball just goes, zoom, flies off somewhere, gets lost, and then has to fend for itself, right? So in, in redefining your power in the relationship, you get to be present, find a way to be present with yourself and open up uh, emotionally to yourself so you can also then provide that space for the woman so that she can then feel safe and relax. And in that space, she's going to feel more comfortable in trusting you to make decisions and lead the family and not feel like she's got to hold on to the finances. And look, I, I was there uh, a few years ago. I can remember... I let Amelia take control of the finances. Again, back then, she didn't work. I was the main, uh, the only breadwinner, if you will. And I just, the story I told myself was it was too much work for me to look after the finances as well as working. So I, I, didn't, I let her take over it. And it got to the point several months later where I was asking her to transfer my money into my account for me. Please. And then, yeah. And then she started asking me questions one time and it hit me and I just thought, hang on a minute. There's been a complete role reversal here. What do you're you use asking, that money for? What, yeah, what are you you're buying? You're asking me questions about money I want that I've earned. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, I'm done with this. I'm going to take control back of the finances. I knew what was going on. I shared it with her. She didn't buy it. She she resisted it. And I said, look, Amelia, I get it. You don't trust me with the money. But the reality is I'm doing it. Whether you like it or not, I'm doing it. I don't mean to be a jerk, but this is what's happening. And you're going to learn to trust me. And this is how you're going to learn to trust me. And if it turns out that I just can't manage money, then cool, you're right. You can have it back. But until that point comes, I'm going to take control of it. So, you know, and she still resisted and had a, a disagreement, but I wouldn't back down because I knew there was a deeper undercurrent to this. If I let that situation grow and develop, then she would have continued to rise. Polarity then would have gone. Intimacy would have fallen by the wayside. And I would have more than likely been in a, over time, if I wouldn't do anything about it, a loveless, sexless relationship, which, is not something that I'm willing to be a part of, quite frankly. Yeah. So bringing it back to, bringing it full circle, and these guys that I speak with on the call that um, have given all of the role and responsibility to their wife, you know, like I said, thinking it's the societal normal thing to do. Be very mindful and careful when you're in that situation. What can you do 
if you're in that situation, to start being more involved in the running of the household. Um, maybe it's you set up a weekly housekeeping meeting, let's say. You make it fun from 7 until 8 on a Monday. You'll cook dinner. Your wife will sit at the table. You'll talk about the kids, how they're progressing, what the finances look like, what the week looks like. And then you know, by the time 8 o'clock is, comes, done, boom. But at least you're involved. All that your wife is looking for you to do is to be involved and make decisions. She, she'll happily then go and, and act those out and maybe make some of her own along the way. But you're the anchor from which she's able to flow about and pivot and move. You get to be that anchor. Um, and, you know, it reminds me, literally, of the call I had an hour ago, Doug. The guy said, look, I'm just going to go and speak to my wife about this. Joe, about joining the program. I said, great. You know, I, I get it. You, know, you want to be on the same page with your wife. Now, you've got two, two ways you can go about this conversation. You can do what you've done in the past and say to your wife, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? And essentially ask her for permission. Or you can go to your wife. Let's say her name's Julie. You can go to your wife, look her in the eye, say, Julie, I realize for the past several years, I've not been the husband that you need me to be. I've let you make all the decisions to raise our kids. I've worked away. And I've then come home and told you it's you that needs to change. <laughs> and that's not fair. And I'm sorry for that. I want you to know that I've joined a program that teaches married businessmen how to be the best man they can be for themselves, for their kids, for their wife, and for their business. And just look her in the eye and just leave it there. Pause for a few seconds, let, the, let it sit in and then just walk off. Or you can elaborate a little bit on um, what you've joined. But the point is, two very different experiences. Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? Can I have permission? Versus, hey, I acknowledge my role in this. I'm sorry. Well, I acknowledge my role in this. <laughs> here's what I'm going to do different. Here's what I've done to change this. And here's where I'm going. And that position, you become a man she can follow, a man she can trust and feel safe with. And usually, for most of the guys that use that technique, it's uh, the clean slate method. The, the guys that use that technique, usually the wife either breathes a sigh of relief, like, oh, Finally. he's here, he's back, I can <clears throat> relax. Oh. Literally, Ryan, Ryan's wife, she cried when he did that with her. Um, or at least it's going to create an opening to draw a line in the sand for you to then start to build a different relationship with your wife. Absolutely beautiful, Tim. And it's spot on. Um, and there's really not much more to it, guys. Uh, it's really about, you know, it's not your fault at all, by the way. Any guys listening to this or watching this, uh, is, you know, I don't want you to feel bad about the situation, how this, this power dynamic shifted for you. It's, it's what's been coming at us for decades, generation at this point, um, with a new way of doing things. And it's just not working. You can look at it with the divorce rates. You can look at it with satisfaction in couples, the men that we get to talk to. Um, there needs to be a new paradigm. And uh, that's why it needs to be a new system, a new way of doing things. Um, and Tim, you're spot on. You know, you go to Julie and you have that conversation. But also, be, it's okay for Julie not to believe you. If you've been oh, yeah. following a pattern for 20 years, 10 years, 2 years, Right, that's all she knows of you now. Now she wants the old you, the powerful you that that got her right, caught her so to speak in the in the dating realm. She wants that man back, the man that she sees inside of you. So it may take a little time, but starting with that and letting her know that you are working on yourself, you have a plan, someone helping you, and something that's going on, a plan that you're following that's been proven before, uh, is going to give her a little bit more reassurance. So it's absolutely amazing. So gentlemen, that's a wrap for us at The Powerful Man Show. If you haven't already, go over to thealphareset.com where you can get more trainings from the founder himself, Tim Matthews, right on there. And also get the opportunity to speak to somebody to see if your situation is the right fit for the activation method in The Alpha Reset. That's it for us today, guys. Have an amazing day and we'll see you next time on The Powerful Man Show.